Oh yeah, I said that there were two ways in which the internet blood sports era has, uh, has led to the great silence. The first being the TOSs that have developed everywhere that keep us from expressing certain IDs. The other great silence is that you don't have Kraut and T anymore doing factual claims in this video. Uh, I think he came back to the internet. I've been watching that a couple of months ago. And his videos are not even worth responding to because he gave up this idea of I'm a scientist. I'm a, I'm a YouTube scientist. I'm going to collaborate with YouTube scientists. And so the other great silencing that has been resulting from the internet blood sports era is i think a great uh, contribution of mine which is that i shamed people like back in the blood sports days the the pain that we could induce in a debater if they were coming and i could debunk him live or i would say oh i've been looking at a study you're wrong just these kinds of and, and the way i shamed the kraut and t for his videos uh, this has led to, I would say, a general uh, context of almost intimidation. People are scared of speaking. At least, definitely, Kraut and T has been scared of speaking. So you see less and less videos by leftists where they will make factual statements. You see more smearing, more name-calling, and those were the things that we were able to call out back in the blood sports days, but we're not able to anymore because somehow the powers of stupidity have taken over the platform once again. And you now find yourself at the level of moral arguments where no real verifiable claim is being made. That's a big problem. We'll have to, we'll have to think about how we move forward with this and make it better. I don't know. I, I won't deceive you into thinking that I have a plan. Uh, I, if I had a plan, you would know right away. Because there's no reason why I would hide such a plan. But, you know, in all these waves of massive attention being driven toward me, um, I have did what I could to make a better world of the Internet. And I think I've succeeded. Now we may be entering a third uh, path, one in which I, I might be interacting with Brett Weinstein if he wants to, or he might just do a review of my book. Uh, we will be trying to penetrate mainstream science. Now, it's not that Brett Weinstein is mainstream science anymore. He self-defines as a professor in exile, but... It's a good stepping stone to eventually get the to eventually get the entire world to know the kind of risks we are faced with. Because as a reminder, although I've said that my book was a theoretical one and one about the beginnings of life, it does reveal something extremely grave about the future of humanity. If people engage in a phenotypic revolution, it is the end for the human phenotype. It is the end for anything that you hold dear as part of humanity. That means the corporations, if you like corporations, the state, if you like the state, the creativity, the genius of humans. The evolutionary pressures that apply to a, revolution, to a phenotypic revolution system are absolutely different from the ones that apply to an evolving life form. We're currently an evolving life form, and we struggle to even remain great because of all the forces of civilization that that favor a uh, lack of talent, if you will, that 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 crush meritocracy. But this is nothing compared to what's about to happen if we start modifying the genes of babies. We will find ourselves as sterile worker of a colony type system, the same type that exists in ants and bees. And if you want the closer approximation to what we will become as a result of this, look at the sterile worker hand. 
that's what we will all be. Ariel Suarez says, JF, sad thing is Kraut and T had better arguments and evidence against the reality of race than many college professors. And still his arguments and evidence were very shitty. Oh yeah, he... I mean, you, you can appreciate the effort without accepting the argument, and I would totally grant that. He was such a more interesting opponent to interact with than uh, than these people who are specialized in escaping the truth. Because you know what was good with Kraut and T? He believed in himself. And man, I miss that. I miss having opponents who actually believe in what they're saying. Not those who are engaging, like the ones of today, where they know where they're going, they're planning different outs, they're planning different ways in which they can't really engage with the argument. Kraut and T was a young boy. He believed he had it right. And that was good to crush. <laughs>